And I think we should point out Taiwan Semi uh, reported today, the CEO noting that he expects 2024 to be a healthy growth year, and he calls out robust AI-related demand, but also strong demand for the five nanometer technologies and the three nanometer technologies. Now, Josh, you don't own Taiwan Semi, but you are also looking at AMD and, AMD and NVIDIA, which you own, and Bill was calling those out. What do you make from what Taiwan Semi had to say today with your current positions? Look, Taiwan Semi is, I think, one of the five most important companies in the world, strategically. Like, you, you can name almost any other company and say if that company shut down for 30 days, it might be a little uncomfortable for some of their employees, but it probably wouldn't be the end of the world. Coke drinkers can switch to Pepsi, et cetera. Taiwan Semi stops for one day, the entire global situation would be in serious trouble. That's how important this company is. So when they speak, it's very important that we all listen. There are not a lot of international stocks that are that important to U.S. investors. Taiwan Semi is very unique in that respect. They make chips for Apple for Qualcomm, for AMD, for NVIDIA. They are highly involved in all of the most important growth stories in the S&P 500. I say all that to make it very clear that when they tell you CapEx should be 28 to 32 uh, two billion dollars for this year, um, that's really important. Their spending has really important read-throughs to all these other names. That's why I think you see the sector rallying. It's important to point out, however, these stocks have already been huge winners. They're becoming very popular. There is still a cycle. There's still cyclical companies, and we might be getting a little bit carried away. I just want to share two stats with you that I think are important. 88% of the names in the SMH ETF are above their 200-day moving average. This has been above average for 29 straight trading days going back to December 5th. This is a historic level of the amount of semiconductor stocks that are rallying all at the same time. Additionally, 16% of these SMH names are trading with an RSI above 70. Mm -hmm. 70 would be overbought. So almost a fifth of the index are overbought stocks. What that tells me, if you're not in NVIDIA and AMD uh, and you're looking for your entry point, today might not be the best. I think you're going to get a shakeout. I think you will get better opportunities in these stocks. You might have to wait through the end of earnings season to get it. But I think it's worth waiting, given how extended so many of these charts are, Courtney. I want to pull back on the on the beginning of your comments with Taiwan Semi being so important globally. Why, then, is that a name you don't own? Because it's overbought? Because it's so stretched? Well, something could be important, but not necessarily be where I want my investment dollars. Okay, sure, it's fair. important strategically. Their comments matter. Their guidance sets the tone. And the way that they think about the roadmap is how all of the other companies in the ecosystem software included, have to think about the roadmap. So that's why they're important. Okay. Not necessarily important as a, com a component in a portfolio. Okay. Although, I, by the way, I think I have uh, I think I have exposure via international ETFs, so I'm not, like, totally out. Sure. No, but, that, that makes sense. And, and really good points, too, about the power here. I mean, Wells Fargo, Chris Harvey, really pointing out this, this one stat. As of January 15th, NVIDIA accounted for 100 percent of the XPX's year-to-date advance. I know we're only in January, but that's pretty powerful. I mean, Kerry, is, is the reason that you're not deep into the chip space because of the valuations? Well, I wish we owned them right now, for okay. sure, and last year. But the truth is, you can only own so many names in a portfolio. We have 33 names, and we have a lot of mega cap names, a lot of technology stocks that have been great. The semis are cyclical, and we have been looking for an opportunity to buy them when they have cracked, when they come down. And there's a point, and I agree with, with Josh, that we'll be able to add to a, create a position where we don't have one in one of these names and we'll feel better about it than if we buy it here and there's a whatever percent, 50 percent chance that we might be able to buy it cheaper later. But what I think this news says that, that's critically important is that they are seeing demand and they are not seeing any sign of a recession. I mean, this is a cyclical industry. We know that AI is a big part of it, but it's not just AI. The world needs chips for everything, you know, whether it's cars whether it's tractors, whether it's all kinds of gaming devices, television sets, consumer products, non-consumer products. And if they are saying that we expect a very good year, that says something positive about the economy. 
globally, not just U.S., maybe they're seeing something from China. I mean, maybe they're seeing some strength that the people talk about recession w would be good to take a strong look at and say, gosh, you know, maybe with strong employment, semiconductors, et cetera, we've got a market situation and fundamentals that can sustain uh, higher levels. Very good. Very good points. I remember, of course, when we learned how important chips were to us when there was that chip shortage. And then we realized how many things really they, they were a part of.